I'll come back. The Nelson Mandela University has partnered with Tangible Africa and the Leva Foundation to celebrate one of the country's biggest icons, our late former Democratic President Nelson Mandela. At least 10,000 pupils from countries such as Ghana, Kenya, Tanzania, Zimbabwe, Ireland, Germany and England will participate in the Coding for Mandela tournament. For more on this, I'm joined by engagement manager at Leva Foundation, Jackson Shabalala. Thank you very much, Mr. Shabalala, for joining us on Newsnight this evening. Um, it's very exciting. Exciting. Coding is absolutely uh, the buzzword um, and taking our young people into the fourth industrial revolution and into the next age of digital communication. Can you tell us a little bit more about the plans for this coding tournament on Nelson Mandela Day? Thanks for having me here. It's really great uh, to share about the excitement of Nelson Mandela and uh, just celebrating his legacy. Well, Tangible Africa is an engagement project between Nelson Mandela University and Lever Foundation, and it's really about enhancing learners' career dreams by introducing them to coding concepts. And in the way that we've been teaching coding, we teach coding by playing. Learners play our app, our mobile app called Rangers. It uses uh, token pieces that have QR codes in them that give instructions because coding is a list of instructions that tell a computer what to do. And the game works in such a way that whatever instructions the learners have put together in that, those puzzles executes code. And this fun way of learning really introduces learners to 21st century skills and works to bridge the digital divide that we see in Africa. And it's really a great way uh, to have different people from different schools, different countries all come together uh, to really get skills of the future. So we're really looking forward to the learners who are going to participate in this. And a very, very big thank you to all the host sites and all the teachers and nonprofit uh, organizers that are really working to make this a success. Just in terms of how it all fits together, are these learners who've ever been exposed to coding before? And how will they actually engage across such a wide variety of countries? Right. So. The majority of learners that we reach have never been exposed to coding before because we really try to expose coding to those learners in under-resourced communities. So we go to rural areas where there's no ele uh, electricity or internet and we teach them uh, offline coding. And then the schools that are more resourced, we've actually seen that our course and our program improve their marks and other things and uh, improve their problem solving skills, etc. So we go to these host sites, different schools in a community. We'll go to one area that has been predetermined. And since they've played the game before, the different schools will compete against each other in that community. So for example, in Cape Town, we will be at uh, the museum over there in the city hall. And then schools close to that region will go to uh, against each other there, uh, live over there. And in Kabecha, we're going to be in North End, and schools from our region will all meet there. And then in Unu, uh, the captive site, in Johannesburg, in Kenya, in Nairobi, in uh, Ghana, and different areas, there will be localized tournaments. And then those winners of those localized tournaments will get into an online tournament where we'll provide access for them to be on a WhatsApp uh, live competition with us in September. And then in December, it all culminates in a World Cup, in a coding World Cup, where learners from Ireland, Germany, and London, and different uh, spaces in Europe will all compete against each other. So it doesn't only close the digital divide, but also closes wealth inequalities and all these divides that learners from a rural place in Eastern Cape can participate in a project with learners from Dublin. How old is how old are the learners participating? So there are two groups. We have groups in grade six and grade seven. That is the primary group. So they are about twelve and thirteen years old. Then we have grade eights and grade nines, fourteen and fifteen years old, participating in the two different categories. Uh, but the program is for we have a foundation phase program where learners will be playing boats, but that will all be at their schools. So the younger learners will also participate in Mandela Day. They won't miss out, and they'll be playing one of our famous uh, shoe games that teaches how to follow instructions. And those are eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds, 10-year-olds. But our, our program really does cater for any school-going age.
So it's so incredible that the youth are being exposed to coding, and, and coding needs no excuse, um, you know, for learners to engage and to learn more. Um, but tell us about the link between coding this tournament and Nelson Mandela Day. All right, that's great. So. This project is actually an engagement project with Nelson Mandela University and Lever Foundation. And we are in the Nelson Mandela Bay. Our HQ is in Kabeja. And um, we really have an affinity towards the legacy that Nelson Mandela has uh, left behind, especially when it comes to what he believed in education, that it can really be the key to change the world. So we were saying we have this great coding game that has made an impact in many parts of the continent and overseas and to celebrate the legacy of Nelson Mandela about giving back. We as Tangible Africa and Nelson Mandela University, along with our partners and namely uh, AWS, Amazon Web Services and Communities, have really thought, what's the best way we can uh, celebrate Mandela's legacy? Let's get young people to have fun around education. And Nelson Mandela asked us to give 67 minutes back on this special day. He didn't ask it to be a public holiday. He didn't ask people to relax. But he was like, how can we contribute uh, to society? And we believe this is our way of contributing to society. And the young learners we are developing will one day also contribute to society, not just uh, out of social activism, but also economically, because of all the skills that they'll learn to be active in the job market of the future. So it might be a little bit late for young people themselves to be watching this. Um, I don't know how many young people watch the news these days anyway, but if there's parents watching and think, shucks, my child would be perfect for this, they would absolutely love the opportunity to get involved. Um, are, are specific learners from specific schools targeted? Is it open to entries? So we believe in inclusive education and it's open to everyone. So as long as the learners of a school going age, and for example, if a parent is watching this and they're like, hey, I want my child's school to get involved in this, they can email info at leverfoundation.org and we will see if we have a coding facilitator nearby or try to arrange an online training for the schools to be involved. Uh, maybe your kid or your child is at an after school program. Let them also contact us. We are open and willing to work with as many people as possible. So uh, really even one of our projects, Bona Africa, where we work with Bona Ubuntu, is targeted to visually impaired and blind learners. So even visually impaired and blind learners are learning how to code using our project. So it's open for everyone. Such an incredible initiative. All the best uh, for Nelson Mandela Day and for this tournament. We hope everyone involved enjoys it thoroughly. And thanks so much for speaking to us again. That was Jackson Chabalala, Engagement Manager at Lever Foundation.